At that place, at that time, Vandiyadeva's heart sank a little when he saw Devaralan. When Devaralan ran amok in the Kadampur palace, the words he spoke then also came to mind. While the whirlwind was brewing in the middle of the ocean, I remembered the messages of Ravidasan and Devaralan. It is difficult to determine how much of them is true and how much is fiction. But it is certain that they were involved in some mysterious and terrible conspiracy. He thought to one of them that at this time, he too was trapped in this supernatural place. He thought for a moment whether to get away from him, give the horse a quick jolt and leave. He looked around with that thought. The light of the fire was visible in the distance. It should be hot. Something is burning in the earth. When there was life in that earth body, how many obscenities would have flowed? What joys and sorrows it would have experienced? In half an hour all that will be left is a handful of ash. That is the fate that all those born into the world must one day attain, both the kings of Manatee and the poor beggar must one day fall prey to the fire and turn to ashes. The horror left as suddenly as it had come. Why run away from this disguised imposter? He has come to say something. Can you listen to that? Perhaps he is the one who went back and disappeared when the blacksmith entered the furnace. Even that miraculous sword could be his. Didn't it have a picture of a fish near the handle? A little talk with him might reveal some new news. So Valaverian drove the horse slowly. At first, the horse, which had just received a new latum, seemed to have a little trouble walking. I didn't feel like chasing it away. How did you come here, father, and sprout? asked Valaverian. Shouldn't I be asking that question? We tied you to the sails of a ship in the middle of the ocean. How did you escape? said Devaralan. You thought you were the only one who knew magic? I know a little too. I'm glad you found faith in magic. I also knew you'd be out here alone with my magical powers. That's why I came forward and waited. Why did you wait? What is your business with me? Think for yourself. Or find out with magic. You told me your secrets in the middle of the sea. I don't know how much of them was true and how much was fiction. But I've decided to forget those secrets. I'm not going to tell anyone. I don't care about that either. Whenever you think you can tell anyone those secrets, your tongue will be cut out. You're dumb. Vandiyathevan's body shivered. He remembered the mute women he had met in Tanjore and Sri Lanka. He walked for a short distance. Why does this sinner follow us? What is the way to escape from him? How useful would it be if there was a mud pit like Kadakare? Or catch it in the river and throw it away? It is useless. There is not much water in the river. If there is no other way, it will break. It has to be taken. Brother, I know what you're thinking. But it's out of the question. Don't go for it. Vandiyathevan wanted to change the subject. It takes some time to escape from him. Till then some talk should be given. Where is your partner Ravidasan? Devaralan smiled a ghostly smile and asked, You want to know, isn't it? Where is Ravidasan? He asked. Vandiyathevan was startled. He should not have taken the talk about Ravidasan, wrong take. After looking at Ravidasan and talking to him, is he looking deeply at us? Or... What, brother, are you idle? Won't you tell me where Ravidasan is? Let me go. Where is the runner girl Pungazali? At least tell me. Vandiyadeva trembled like one who had stepped on a snake. He was reluctant to speak up. You won't say anything about her either, let her go. You may have a good reason for wanting to save her. Brother. Did you sing a love song a little while ago? Did you think of her? No, not really. Valaverian said excitedly. Why are you so agitated? Why so angry? Well, well. There's no time to talk about all that now. Why are you holding my horse's face rope? Leave it. I'm going, there's something urgent. You still haven't heard what I came for. Can I just ask? 
This Molayaratangarai has a miraculous power. Whatever one wishes for here, it will happen to them immediately. I don't want anything. That's a lie. She wants to see you to whom you sing your love song. You can see if you like. When? Let's see tonight. What story is this? Not a story brother. Look at that. Devarala pointed out. Some distance away on their way, some object was dimly seen. Vandiyathevan stared. He knew it was a palanquin, a closed palanquin. Aha! That tooth! Where have we seen? Why, isn't that Palaku of Ila Irani at Pavur? Maybe Nandini is in there, what? He couldn't control his urge to know. He brought the horse near the palanquin and stopped it. A curtain was visible on the palanquin on which the image of the palm tree was placed. The screen also seemed to shake. Immediately Vandiyadeva jumped down from his horse. At the same moment, a strange sound came out of Devarala's throat. From the neighborhood, seven or eight people jumped up from the cover of the bushes and fell on Vandiyadeva. They held him so that he could not move. They tied their hands and feet with cloth. Someone blindfolded him and someone took the sword by force. Then they lifted Vandiyathevan inside that palanquin. Some immediately carried the palanquin and hurried away. Others went back and forth. Devarala led the way. A man walked holding a horse. So much has happened so fast. It is no exaggeration to say in the blink of an eye. Vandiyathevan was stunned when many people came and attacked him at the same time. He never expected such an attack. He was unable to think about anything until the palanquin started to move. Couldn't figure out what was going on. But when the palanquin started moving, the mind became clear little by little. The blindfold slipped off easily. With his bound hands, he pulled back the palax curtain and looked. He came down from the river bank and found out that the palaka was going somewhere. It was such a difficult thing to untie his hands and feet and get free. Jumping from palanquin is also easy. The horse was coming behind. It was not impossible for him to leave the seven or eight people and jump on the horse. He wondered if he could do that. But something stood in the way. There was a strange smell in the palanquin. It excited him at first. It was not easy to get rid of its charms. Where is this tooth going to attach itself? There were reasons to speculate that Nandini would join. A desire to see her rose faintly at the base of his soul. It grew into a great interest to come. There were so many objections to it. Despite all objections, desire materializes. What will she do to us? Can you see what she is calling for? If there is anything to be known, can it be known? Will he be unable to maneuver for maneuver? He doubted if he would ever get a chance to see her again. No need to go to Tanjavur anymore. Going there is dangerous. It's easier to look down the road than that. Can you look at her one more time? What will she do to us? Can you see what she is calling for? If there is anything to be known, can it be known? Will he be unable to maneuver for maneuver? He doubted if he would ever get a chance to see her again. No need to go to Tanjavur anymore. Going there is dangerous. It's easier to look down the road than that. Can you look at her one more time? What will she do to us? Can you see what she is calling for? If there is anything to be known, can it be known? Will he be unable to maneuver for maneuver? He doubted if he would ever get a chance to see her again. No need to go to Tanjavur anymore. Going there is dangerous. It's easier to look down the road than that. Can you look at her one more time? Yes, yes. There was another compelling reason to see Nandini. The dumb queen he saw in Sri Lanka. Was he right in thinking that she looks like Nandini? Don't want to know that? While Vandiyadeva was thinking like this, his head started spinning. He seemed sleepy. No, no. It's no sleep. It is during the day that he has slept for so long. It's kind of crazy. Manandan surrounded by this palak enchants us like this. 
alas! What a terrible danger! You have to jump from the palanquin! Vandiyathevan tried to untie the handcuffs, couldn't, the hands didn't move. He tried to sit up, that also failed. He tried to beat his feet, the legs also refused to move. That's it. The eyelids closed, consciousness quickly faded, and unconsciousness overcame him. When Vandiyathevan wakes up from unconsciousness, old memories come to him and he tries to jump from the palanquin. But strange! Strange! He is no longer in Palak. He was in a spacious room. The room was brightly lit with lamps. Something smelled here too. But it didn't smell like it used to, it just smelled like smoke, what he experienced earlier was the fragrance that enchanted knowledge, this is the fragrance that made knowledge clear. He sat up in the sitting position. He looked around. One door was open. Vandiyathevan looked eagerly. Nandini came through the open door. He was looking at Vanda without looking at her. There were many reasons for his surprise and consternation. One reason is her indescribable beauty. Another reason was that he happened to meet her unexpectedly. Another reason was the thought of how similar the image of this young woman was to the image of the old woman he had seen in Sri Lanka. Do the shapes match? Or does the old woman look like this because she wears high fashion jewelry? In a sweet singing voice, Sir. You are very good. Nandini said. Vandiyathevan Vandanam. He said. Leaving without telling the good man? You left the Tanjore Palace without telling me, didn't you? Vandiyathevan laughed. I helped you to get into Tanjore Fort. I took the palm seal ring from my finger. Shouldn't you have given it back to me and gone? Vandiyathevan remained shy and silent. Where? Let's return it now, can't we? It's out of use? You don't intend to come back to Tanjore, do you? Saying that, Nandini held out her beautiful flowery hand. Vandiyathevan said, Devi. That seal ring was taken by the Sri Lankan commander Buddhavikrama Kesari. Therefore, I could not return it, I must forgive you. Didn't you give my birth enemy the ring I gave you? You are a very grateful man. I didn't give it myself. They took it by force. You did something under the power of a warrior who rose from the Vanathirai clan? I can't believe it. Amini. Is it because of force that I am here at this time? They're men. Tell me the truth, sir. Think it over. Did you come here only by force? Did you not come willingly? Did you not have occasion to jump down and run after being mounted on the palanquin? Nandini's questions pierced Vandiyathevan's chest like sharp arrows. Yes? I just came, he said. Why did you come? What did you bring me for? To get my signet ring back. Is that all? There's one more reason. You were in the treasure dungeon under my husband's protection that night, weren't you? Vandiyathevan was startled. You thought I didn't know? It's beautiful. If I hadn't known, could you have escaped that night? Goddess. Yes. I know, and so does the Great Reaper. The Reaper ordered the Mine Warden to kill you there. When he passed I changed the order so you survived. Your beautiful friend was in danger. Otherwise, your bones would now be found next to the piles of pearls in that treasure dungeon. Vandiyathevan drowned in a sea of amazement. He couldn't believe that what she said was true. If it is not true, how did you know that it was hidden there that day? Considering it necessary to say thanks at least for the sake of formality, Amini. He started saying something. No. Why are you trying to say what you don't mean? Don't try to thank me. No goddess. Do you know why I told you about saving your life that day? Not to thank you. Just to warn you not to try to use that tunnel again. It's heavily guarded now. See. I have no intention of going that way again. Why should that be? Are you not in the habit of thinking of those who helped you? Your friend was in danger because of you. 
I had him brought to my palace, treated him with medicine, and sent him away. Are you satisfied with that? Or is betrayal of friendship born with you like betrayal of trust? Nandini's every word penetrated Vandiyadeva's soul like poison. He was stunned and silent. You sent the doctor's son who came with you to Kadakare in your stead, have you inquired what has become of him? I thought I'd ask them. I tell you, but what became of Prince Arulmas Hivarmar, who left Sri Lanka with you? If you tell me that, I will tell you about the doctor's son. Vandiyathevan was shaken by a body shaker. It seemed that she made herself sing like this to know about the prince. He decided not to be deceived. Queen. Don't ask me about that only, he said. Yes. I shouldn't just ask about that. I know you won't get an answer even if I ask. How is your girlfriend? Can I ask about that at least? A spark flew in Vandiyadeva's eyes. Who are you talking about? Watch out. He said. Aha. I'm just being careful. Don't expect to tell that old Maharani. She won't even look at you. She respects you as much as the dust on her feet. I'm asking about that runaway girl who brought you to Sri Lanka and brought you back. Isn't Pungazali your girlfriend? No, not at all. She showed me her lovers herself. She showed me the marauding devils who roam the marshes at midnight. She said they were her lovers. Blessed is she. For her lovers are light-shaped. Brightly appear before the eyes. Mine are dark-shaped. Unfathomable. Have you ever lain at midnight in a darkened, desolate hall? Have you seen bats and owls flapping their feathers and fluttering indistinctly through those dark halls? They flutter restlessly in my inner hall. Beating their feathers. Striking my breast. Brushing my cheek with their feathers. Where do those dark shapes come from? Where do they go? Why do they circle around me? Alas! Do you know? After saying this, Nandini looked around with maddened eyes. Vandiyadeva's heart was also disturbed. Compassion on one side and fear on the other side filled his mind. Goddess! Don't! Have some peace! He said. Who are you to tell me to be quiet? Asked Nandini. I am a poor youth from the monkey clan. Who are you, Devi? Who am I, you ask? I don't know that either. I'm trying to find out. Who am I, a human woman? Or a demon, a devil? No, no. Couldn't it also be a fallen goddess from the god realm? Because of the god's curse? Yes. God's curse is on me. I just don't know what it is. I know who I am and what I was born for. God has only given me one hint so far. Let's see. Saying that, Nandini pointed out the sword beside her, the newly forged sharp sword glinted in the lamplight and caught the eye. Vandiyathevan saw that sword. Immediately he saw it, he knew it was the sword he had seen in the blacksmith's workshop. Till now he was reeling from the venom of Nandini's words. His heart hardened when he saw the sword now made of iron. Because he is used to weapons like swords and swords. Bonded with him from birth, so no fear. Even if Nandini uses that sword on herself, there is no fear. Goddess. I saw. I saw the sword. An engraved sword. A sword fit for a royal family. A sword fit for the hand of a warrior. How did it come to be in the beautiful hand of Melhile? What is the Susakanthan that the goddess has given them through it? He asked. 